the Western view of the mind, the one dominated by a fragmented psychiatric and psychological ISD-10 DSM perspective, is quite literally killing us and our world. We treat everything in this reality, in this world, including our mind, as if it was a grouping or collection of separate yet interrelated components, and that approach betrays our direct experience of reality and existence. This fragmented view of the mind and of the world is completely unreasonable, in my opinion, because everything we experience is from a single, continually flavored, yet undifferentiated perspective. Despite me saying this, there are some distinctions that are helpful, and one of the most helpful distinctions to make in life is the distinction between willful, deliberate thinking and autonomic mentation. So what I'm saying in essence is you are not the thinker of most of what you mistake for being your thoughts, and you are definitely the thinker of what you should only exclusively think of as thought. To make this more clear, you have two sources of worded information, symbolized information and imagery, and most of what you consider thinking, images and words, is not within your full control. You have the deliberate and intentional formation of words and images that require self-awareness and lucidity and direct involvement, and then you have the formation of words and images that is done by the mental organ without our direct involvement and often without our awareness. Most of what we mistake for thinking and thought isn't conscious or deliberate, it's just mentation that happens the same way breathing happens. We can think deliberately and we can involve ourselves and control the autonomic thinking process to some degree the same way we can control the autonomic breathing process. But ultimately the mind and body do what they do whether we're involved or aware of it or not. A lot of the times when we're settled and in a good state, we don't notice our mentation any more than we notice our breathing when we're healthy. These autonomic processes largely escape our awareness unless they become unpleasant or abnormal, but because mentation is far more likely than breathing to be seen as unpleasant, abnormal, a concern, pertinent or interesting or energetic, we pay far more attention to that than we do our autonomic, natural happening breath, respiration. And this is the reason that we overly identify and overly attribute our involvement in the mental happenings, the autonomic mental activities, when they're just natural processes. It's hard to believe that something could happen so continually, be so pertinent and relevant to our lives, such a concern, and not be a product of what we're doing. Again, if I failed to mention it thus far, there is nothing wrong with mentation. It is the product of a natural and healthy mind. The only problem is when we believe it's something we're doing, when we mistakenly identify it as deliberate, conscious, and willful action. Then we give it validity and rightness when it's just, in my opinion, information. Aside from mentation, the rest of the words and images in our mind, in our awareness, should be owned the same way we own passing out and fainting from deliberately holding our breath. It's our fault. It's our doing and making. And it doesn't take much to stimulate thought either, but actual thinking, deliberate thinking, seems to only happen when we direct our attentive energy toward the front of the mind where the prefrontal cortex is housed. To make this more challenging, we don't have to be fully aware, fully conscious that we're directing attentive energy and stimulating thoughts to stimulate thoughts and thinking and imagery. And we don't have to be fully aware that we're interfering with the rhythm of our breathing to compromise it. But in both cases, it does mean that we're responsible, we're accountable. Understanding the difference between autonomic mentation and deliberate, willful, conscious thinking holds incalculable benefits. For one, you're far less likely to succumb to acting on and speaking on everything that enters your awareness, as if it's what you meant to think, say, or do. For two, you're far less likely to be injured, lessened, or weighed down by what is essentially information about you and your environment that you're misinterpreting as right, real, and existing, deliberate, conscious thoughts about yourself, especially when they're unflattering unfavorable and painful. They're not nothing, but unless you're unwittingly directing attentive energy toward your thought nerve, it isn't you. Deliberate thinking is a sign that we're using our will, that we're acting intentionally, which means we should take full responsibility for what we formulate, construct, and allow to live in our mind. But in deliberate thinking, autonomic mentation is just the mind's best way of packaging and formulating a coherent picture out of information to present to us and it's often not intelligible and often not clear which means it isn't us or we would understand why we're thinking it we don't involve ourselves in mentation any more than we involve ourselves in digestion in my opinion we have some involvement we can influence it but it isn't us and it isn't dependent upon us or our involvement. Whether you're plotting on someone for revenge or you're planning a vacation, you're thinking deliberately and intentionally and you're responsible for these thoughts and what happens after you act on these thoughts. 
really in the same way you're responsible for overeating, even if you're not fully aware that you're overeating. We have to have accountability, take responsibility for the condition of our bodies and minds, and we really must be adults about it. We just shouldn't be lessened or lowered or diminished by the state or condition of the body and mind at any point unless we're being neglectful or eschewing and ignoring pertinent, useful, and helpful information. Understanding this distinction goes a long way toward helping us understand our role, our hand in our own suffering, and it also helps to simplify a mind and experience a life that the medical, psychiatric, mental health community has grossly overcomplicated. But that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Find me on Discord if you want to let me know what you think at length or ask me some questions that can stay ever present and useful and seen by others. Find me over there through the link in the description or on my channel or on my website. Thank you for watching this one. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope to see you on another one. You have a great day. Take care. Later.